Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I want to talk about Halo, and nothing more. For a lot of people, Halo has been so impactful and meaningful, and everyone seems to have a lot of memories of the golden days, or the good old days, which was from about 2001 to 2010-ish. The main reason for this video is to talk about my personal experience with Halo, and what it has done to me, and the impacts the Halo franchise overall has had. With that out of the way, feel free to comment your best memories of Halo, whether it's from 2001 to 2010, or more recently, 2011 to 2020. Let's begin. So, where do I begin? At the time Halo 1 was released, I was 7 years old. Growing up with Nintendo and Sega consoles, I had no idea what an FPS game was. I used to spend my early life running through games like Super Mario World and Ocarina of Time. By the time of the original Xbox's release, along with Halo 1, I was completely in the dark. It wasn't until roughly 2002-2003 that one of my best friends, Taylor, actually introduced me to Halo. See, Taylor was a friend I had met in elementary school, and I would go to his house pretty often on the weekends. We would do your usual outdoorsy things, like play football or sneak out of the house at night. But one night he asked if I would ever play Halo. I asked him, what is Halo? And he tried to explain to me that you're a robot killing aliens and something called the Flood was eating people and making them zombies. As a kid, this fascinated me. I grew up with the primarily kid-friendly games and wasn't really exposed to any violent shooting games or horror games. I shouldn't count Contra back in the day. So we head up to his room, plugged the Xbox in, and man, let me tell you, those original Xbox controllers were something else. It was like holding an NFL-sized football of buttons, but we managed. Taylor had told me he's been stuck on a level for a bit and thought I'd be able to help him out. Taylor had two younger brothers, but at the time, they were just a little too young to understand everything going on in Halo. Me, being an avid gamer, was ready for the challenge, or so I thought. He turns on the Xbox and loads up the level 343 Guilty Spark. As many hardcore and even casual Halo players know, 343 Guilty Spark is the first introduction to the Flood. It's also probably not the best introductory level to be showing your friend, who has no idea even how to play Halo, or what's even going on. Let me be the first to tell you, that was one of the scariest but most fun nights I've ever had gaming, ever. I can't recall how many times we died, but we stayed up all through the night playing through Halo 1. After that night, I begged my mom for an Xbox and Halo, but she told me to be patient and wait. After that, Halo kinda disappeared for me. Yes, Taylor and I still hung out every weekend, but we found other things to do, other games to play. It wasn't until the release of Halo 2 where I would see myself becoming the Halo fan I am today. Weeks before the release of Halo 2, I had begged and pleaded with my mom to get an Xbox for Halo 2, but still she refused. To fuel my Halo itch, I began watching G4 TV. For those of you who are old enough to remember that gem of a network, G4 TV was basically TV for gamers. You had shows like X-Play, Cheat, and Attack on the Show, which had game reviews, game tips, and release news. G4 TV actually broadcasted the release of Halo 2 and the long, long lines at Toys R Us. I remember watching this and thinking about how great Halo 2 was going to be, but also how jealous I was of everyone in line. Halo 2 came out in November of 2004, which also happened to be one month before Christmas, and man did I beg for an Xbox and Halo 2 that Christmas. I pleaded and bargained, even said I would do extra chores around the house. And finally, the day had arrived, Christmas morning. I didn't get my Xbox. I was devastated. By G4 TV to fuel my Halo craving. Another childhood friend, Mike, had actually gotten an Xbox and Halo 2, and you bet I was over his house every chance I could playing with him and his brother. Mike and I would host Halo tournaments at his house where we would invite his neighbors over to play. Us, all being very young still, weren't very good at the game, but we still had a blast. One night, Mike and I were playing and we had seen something about Xbox Live. We weren't too sure exactly what that was, but we looked into it. It's around 1am and Mike had checked his Halo 2 case to find Xbox Live trial code. Excited, we redeemed the code and made his first official Xbox Live account. We weren't too sure if you had to remember your account name or not, so we chose something we could easily remember. Pluto 22. After signing into Xbox Live, we stayed up all night. We weren't sure really what was going on, but it was the first time we actually got to play competitively. I imagine our teammates hated us, but hey, that's how you get better. Around the same time, my friend Taylor convinced me to join Boy Scouts. This was awesome because not only did I get to see my friends more often outside of school, but gave us time to play Halo together. 
In Boy Scouts, Taylor and I had actually met a kid named Kyle. His tag was DC Kid 12 back in the day. This was the first time we both had played against someone that was way better than we were. He knew of jumps, button tricks like BXR, and where and when power weapons spawned on each map. I asked Kyle how he got so good and he told me he's been watching MLG on Spike TV. So for all back in the day, Spike used to air MLG matches for Halo 2 on Saturday nights. I watched my first event and was immediately hooked on the competitive Halo. I was a Final Boss fanboy, I know, very easy team to like since they won practically everything, but it's who I supported. I watched hours upon hours of MLG determined to get good at Halo. Thing is, I still did not have an Xbox. That all finally changed Christmas of 2005. I had finally gotten an Xbox, Halo 2, and Battlefront 2. I practiced Halo 2 almost daily after school and with Taylor and Mike. I was finally able to beat both them in Halo pretty convincingly, but nothing really came out of my practice. I was still too young to be allowed to travel to events, nor did I have the money to do so. So I had to stick with playing locally. Unfortunately, my home didn't have any internet, so Xbox Live just wasn't possible. For the remainder of 2006, I played Halo like it was my job. This was also around the time of middle school where I had a lot of trouble making friends. I was pretty introverted and putting myself out there just was not my thing. Along with home issues, my daily life was dreading school and coming home and playing my video games. Halo 2 will always hold a special place in my life, but it doesn't even compare to what Halo 3 did for me. I always told myself there would never be a game experience like Halo 3 ever again. For those who got to experience 2007 to 2010, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Once again, G4 TV was covering the Halo 3 release and I was practically drooling over the game. I actually would sit in my room calling EB Games asking how much I could get for trade-ins to fund Xbox 360 and Halo 3. At one point, I actually made a pile of clothes I was going to sell to my neighbors, but I was so desperate. But my mom quickly shut that down, understandably. My friends Taylor and Mike were equally excited about Halo 3, although they weren't as committed to getting good at the game like I was. Halo 3 came out in September of 2007, and that same year on Christmas, my mom blessed me with a 360 in Halo 3. I was ecstatic. I'd been the Halo 3 campaign in one sitting and couldn't wait to get Xbox Live running. Luckily, we finally got an internet, so I did some chores and saved enough to get a network adapter for my 360. Finally, I had Xbox Live. Also, shoutouts to the old 360 dashboard. Continuing, I made my account and logged into Halo 3 for the first time. And all that offline practice playing Halo 2 and watching countless videos paid off huge. I was very, very good at Halo 3. I think I just understood the game at a different level than all my friends. I grinded Halo 3 like it was the last game on the planet. I become so much better than all my Halo friends and I began to build a reputation at my school. Remember how I mentioned school was pretty rough making friends put myself out there? Well, Halo 3 changed everything. At my school, I was known for being the best player at the time. I had kids I didn't even know asking if I could help them rank up. Kids offered money to recover their account and get to certain levels in game modes. I'll hop online and get float with invites to play ranked and customs. It was the best. At last, I began to branch out in school, making friends, and most importantly, memories. Halo 3 did a lot of things right. Forge was groundbreaking, and custom games were probably where I spent most of my time on Halo 3. I still remember Fat Kid, Duck Hunt, Jenga, Cops and Robbers, Teacher, and so many more. I even started a clan with Taylor called the Clan of Shame, and we would spend hours in Forge building our base. I still remember running through Halo 3 Legendary Co-op and getting all the achievements to unlock the art pieces Halo 3 had to offer. Taylor, his little brother, and I beat Halo 3 Legendary together, and it was awesome. Accidentally finding skulls, gaining terminals, and discovering easter eggs such as the talking grunt was great. Another good friend I had made from Halo 3 was Devin. We had been friends since 6th grade, but come high school with Halo 3 at its peak, we became really good friends. I was always better than him at Halo, so I would spend hours playing with him every day, helping him level up, and trying to teach him everything I knew. We grinded every day and even made our own clan, called AKA. It was a little cheesy, but Halo 3 had clans everywhere. Deep into Halo 3's life, Halo ODST had come out. I personally wasn't a fan of this game, but you needed to get the exclusive Recon armor, and also the new map pack. Recon was only given out to players who made it to Bungie favorites or was a content creator for Halo. If you saw someone with Recon back in the day, you respected them. So with the release of ODST, Vidmaster achievements have been added to Halo 3 and ODST. These were considered super difficult challenges, and if you could beat them, you would unlock Recon. I will consider the one of the last moments of Halo 3 for me. Around this time, Breach had been announced along with the MLG beginning to slow down Halo 3 tournaments. Those three years from 2007 to 2010 were slowly beginning to end. Some of my closest friends on Halo had been online in months, and Taylor moved away. By year 2010, I was a sophomore in high school. 
Halo 3 had been a great way to make friends and branch out, but once Reach came out, being good at Halo 3 really meant nothing. I tried to play Halo Reach, I really did. Although I think the campaign is awesome, I just couldn't get to liking the game the same way I did at Halo 3. A lot of people will agree that Reach was the beginning of the end for Halo, and I'll have to be one of those people. I officially ended my Halo career in 2011. By this time, I was burned out from Halo 3 with over thousands of custom games and matchmaking games under my belt. By my junior year of high school, Halo 3 was collecting dust. I often thought about those years, 2007 to 2010, and how much that really helped me. Without Halo 3 specifically, I wouldn't have been confident enough to branch out in high school or make the friends that I did. By 2012, I was still in contact with some of my Halo buddies. Mike was pretty inactive Halo-wise, but we were really good friends regardless of Halo or not. Unfortunately, I lost contact with Taylor, my friend who introduced me to Halo. Occasionally, we would talk every once in a while to catch up, but since he moved pretty far away, that slowly stopped altogether. With Halo 4 releasing, I thought that, that was it. Halo is back. Man, was I disappointed. Halo is now under 343, not Bungie, and they honestly just did not do a good job. I don't want to get too deep with the Halo 4 talk, as that's not the point of this video, but I wanted to bring something up that really affected me in 2016. Come 2014, Halo Master Chief Collection had launched. MCC had every Halo game except for Reach and ODST at the time. Once again, I thought this was it, Halo would be back. But with a disastrous launch, any momentum Halo MCC had was immediately lost. The game was completely unplayable, and that sucked. It had so much potential, but that was rushed out and underdeveloped. By 2016, Halo MCC was playable, and I wanted to try to reach out to some of the old Halo buddies to run some customs. Mike was in military school at the time, Devin was in the military, and Taylor, well, Taylor sadly passed away in October 2016. Having someone I had grown up with, someone who introduced me to my favorite game series of all time, passing away so suddenly, it really took a toll on me. We were best friends and we were also very young. I saw Taylor more of a brother than a friend, and the memories I have tied with Halo and him I'll never forget. It sucks what happened, it really does, but life goes on. To this day, February 2020, I still play MCC. I try to run custom games weekly on Halo 3 and now Reach in honor of Taylor, so if you'd like to join for some fat kid or duck hunt, please leave your gamer tag below or feel free to message me via Discord in the description. Well guys, that's it. That's my experience with Halo. Um, it had a lot of ups and downs, but overall, in 2001 2010, it was the best time for gaming in my life. To friends I've made, the custom games played, and the friends I'll make in the future, hopefully with Halo Infinite, please be good. Thank you. You've all been a part of something more than just a game. Thanks for watching.